Right. So talking about new state of the arts coming and things moving quickly, uh, things getting obsolete, new models taking over earlier implementations. We have to address the elephant in the room, which is GPT-3. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of hype, as we all know. Uh, I'm curious as to how you think about this. This has come after your book has launched. I think, and does this affect anything that you talk about in the book or how do you guys look at it? What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I would actually take that question because myself being a PhD uh, in language generation, uh, this is definitely a very important moment to ponder about that. Is it, is it the defining moment that we all have been looking for? And is it, uh, is it the case that we have, we have solved one of the biggest challenges that, that are currently uh, so many researchers are tackling, uh, but uh, but I think uh, I think uh, I would be very careful as as there are many uh, follow up blogs that are coming up uh, on GPT three. Uh, it's true uh, that these uh, these big models, uh, which has of the order of you know hundred billion parameters, has extreme capacity, and uh, and one of the boon of uh, uh, being a, a very good uh, at hallucinating different things, uh, worlds around you, because, uh, I think there, uh, I think people do believe, uh, or at least the way we work, we think about it. Let's say if I give you a cue about a story title, you could very easily come up with a story and the way you do it is it by hallucination. So hallucination, uh, kind of is a, is a, is a layman term that links to a very technical term that's called generalization in machine learning, uh, that whenever you see certain data, you try to, find out common patterns that you could generalize on data that you haven't seen. Uh, and, and that's, that's, that, that's a holy grail, right? That's, uh, we all have been trying to solve that. When you have certain data, you train a model, but just let the model work on unknown data sets that you have. Uh, and that's what GPT-3 is apparently doing. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's an extremely powerful tool as a zero shot or a few shot model where you have a huge model, you have a specific use case, you just give certain data points for your use case and it will just work one, uh, like do wonder in your, in your, in, in, in that specific domain. And that's definitely very, very useful. And, uh, but I, I would, I would refrain it calling a defi defining moment or a, or a, you know, path breaking moment just because that, uh, maybe on the surface, these models are doing great job. These models are catering to the problem. Again, I think, uh, to the, to the cherry picked examples or even, not even cherry picked examples, but the simpler examples in that particular task that you're trying to solve. For example, in a dialogue, uh, let's say if you want to use GPT-3, maybe maybe you can ask questions like, hi, how are you? And probably it would it would give you great answers. Or even you can try to ask trick questions like, okay, uh, what's the meaning of life, et cetera. And it might still give you a good answer, which probably none of the, none of the other models can even do that. It probably doesn't even understand, but uh, that's not the end of it. That that's very good for a demo. That's good. That's very good for an, giving an example and how powerful is your model is. But whenever you think about user applicability, whenever you are you are thinking about trying to put that model in an interactive systems where end users will be using, and then it's it's very important what you are generating uh, is is actually useful, is actually actually consistent, is actually fact checked, and also have you know and, and does not cross the the boundary of ethics and. Uh, does not spit out, you know, uh, you know, foul languages, right? So all of that problems really comes when you try to deploy these huge models into the into the production, try to use it in a, in a user facing use cases. So I think uh, people are still uh, figuring it out and experimenting with this GPT-3, and there have been lots of examples, negative examples, where it still generated, you know, uh, you, know you know, racist comments, you know, uh, biased languages. Uh, uh, that is always a problem in all of the generation models. That is one, but also cases where people try to use it for a very specific uh, purposes, like you know, you know, that deals with extremely specific entities for a certain domain, uh, where the hallucination is still not working. It's still doing a great job, but it's not doing the right job, or it's it's still not giving you the the factual uh, you know kind of sentences that it should generate or a human should write. So so there is always a gap between what you could do in a uh, uh, in a more fancy level and come up with very fluent, uh, uh, you know, languages from this model. But then there's a whole range of spectrum of control generation, uh, fact-based generation, where you have to be factually correct, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, you have to be commonsensical, you have to be ethical, et cetera. And I think all of those problems are still open. So 
it's definitely a good step towards it but we definitely have a lot to work on i think mukul the best way would be that if you i mean if you look at ml way to answer it look at the past if you want to predict the future so i think there was similar euphoria around a lstm or a gru or a attention network or a bert and that is uh, important also because that's when the adoption really starts and it's only when the adoption starts people go to thread bear details to bring out various issues so now if you see currently you see hundreds of paper talking of what are the drawbacks of bert right and i'm sure you will see similar things there i mean no to question about all these models are bringing lot of new perspective and wave to attack problem but is this the silver bullet i am not very sure i would i would say a, a cautious optimism is better that's that's how i would go about it we can see the hype that's there around gpt3 but uh, even the ceo of openai sam altman he's also tweeted to say that what what gpt3 can do is only a very early glimpse of how ai can change the world and probably it's too soon to expect a lot from this model and yeah probably a cautious approach would be a better one to understanding how effective it can be in real life